this problem actually doesn't come from a particular textbook. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at various ways to calculate revenue and think about revenue. So here we have some information that I've labeled as P for price and little q sub d as a form of quantity demanded. But the way that you can think about this is for this particular company, at each price that they feel like setting, this is how many customers are going to be lining up at their door. So you can think of these numbers here as just the quantity of output that the firm can actually reasonably sell at each of these price points. So the first thing that I want to think about is let's just do something easy. Let's just calculate total revenue at each one of these price points. And we know that total revenue, when all of our output is being sold for the same price, total revenue is pretty easy. That that's just going to be price times quantity. So here we could say that if we were setting a price of $13, we'd be selling five units. Our total revenue would be 13 times five or $65. If we were setting a price of $12, we would be selling six units, which makes sense because you'll notice as we're lowering our price, we're able to sell more units and that's consistent with the notion that people are willing and able to purchase more as the price goes down. So here our total revenue would be $12 per unit times six units or $72. If we were to set a price of $11, we'd have seven customers coming to buy from us, and our total revenue would be 11 times seven, or $77. And if we were to set a price of $10, we'd have eight customers showing up, and we'd be able to sell eight units. So our total revenue would be 10 times eight, or $80. We could also calculate average revenue which, you know, average anything is generally the total of that thing. And if we're talking about revenue or cost, it's the total of that equivalent thing divided by quantity. So not surprisingly, average revenue would just be total revenue divided by quantity. So we can put up here, we can say, let's think about average revenue. And that's just total revenue divided by quantity. So we could do that here. And we'll notice an interesting pattern. So here, at this production level and price, our average revenue would just be total revenue of 65 divided by quantity of 5, and we would get $13. At this production level here, our average revenue would be our total revenue of $72 divided by a quantity of 6, or $12. At this production level here, our average revenue would just be total revenue of $77 divided by a quantity of seven, or average revenue of $11. And here, at this production level and price, our average revenue would be a total revenue of $80 divided by a quantity of eight, or $10. And if you're looking at this quantity, or these sets of numbers here, you might notice that they look pretty similar to these numbers over here. And that shouldn't be entirely surprising because again, if we're selling all of our output at the same price, then our average revenue is just total revenue divided by quantity, but then total revenue is just price times quantity. And these guys are gonna cancel out and we're in fact going to get the average revenue is equal to price. We could also calculate marginal revenue which has an analogous definition to marginal cost, and that's just that marginal revenue is the change in total revenue divided by the change in quantity. So we can add that here, and we can say, all right, marginal revenue equals the change in total revenue divided by the change in quantity. And we can go through and think about each of those levels here. Now, that's a little bit hard to do for the first one because what we're saying is we'd want, well, what's the marginal revenue of this fifth unit? So what we'd ideally want to do is compare the total revenue when we're selling five units to what the total revenue would have been when we were selling four units. But we don't have that information because we don't know what price we could have sold four units at. You know, it seems like we could extrapolate from this, but we actually don't know for sure. 
So let's hold off on this one for a second. And let's think instead about calculating the marginal revenue of this sixth unit. And the marginal revenue of this sixth unit is just going to be the change in total revenue that we experienced in going from a production quantity of five to a production quantity of six divided by that change in quantity, which in this case is just one. So our marginal revenue of this sixth unit, we notice we're going from a total revenue of 65 to a total revenue of 72. That's netting us an extra seven bucks on one additional unit of output. So our marginal revenue is just going to be seven divided by one or seven dollars. And we can do that again for the seventh unit. But this seventh unit brings us from a level of revenue of $72 to a level of revenue of $77. So our change in total revenue that we get from selling the seventh unit is just 77 minus 72, which is five. And our change in quantity is just seven minus six, which is one. So our marginal revenue of this seventh unit is going to be five divided by one, or just five dollars. And then for this eighth unit, our change in total revenue is just 80 minus 77, which is just three. And our change in quantity was just eight minus seven, which is just one. So the marginal revenue of this eighth unit is just going to be three divided by one, or three dollars. What you may have already noticed from this example is that our marginal revenue numbers actually aren't the same as our price numbers. In fact, our marginal revenue numbers are strictly less than the price that we're getting at each one of these quantities. And it's worth thinking a little bit about why that is. And what's actually happening is that when we go from a production quantity of five to a production quantity of six, yeah, we get $12 from selling that sixth unit. So that's an incremental revenue of $12. But we had to lower our price on each of the existing units by a dollar. It's not like we're price discriminating and only selling to this sixth guy at a price of $12 and still charging 13 to everybody else. We're lowering the price on all of the units. So our marginal revenue is actually taking that into account. So we have two competing forces. We get the increase in revenue from selling to that last guy and getting a positive price from that extra customer. But we also have a negative impact of having to lower the price to everybody that we were already selling to. And as those two things put together mean that whenever we have to lower our price in order to sell to more customers, our marginal revenue is actually going to be less than our price. The only time that marginal revenue and price would actually be the same is if we could sell as much as we wanted at the going market price and we don't have to worry about lowering our price in order to actually sell more. We can even formalize this concept a little bit more and we can say actually marginal revenue can be broken down into two components that we can talk about what's known as the output effect and what's known as the price effect. Now, the output effect is basically the positive part of that trade-off that we were talking about and represents how much money did you get from selling to that extra guy. The price effect, on the other hand, represents the negative side of the marginal revenue trade-off. And the price effect is negative and it represents how much you're losing because you had to lower your price on all the units that you were already selling at that higher price. So let's work through this and we can see how those two effects come together. So again, let's not worry about this first guy here. But we can say in going from selling a quantity of five to a quantity of six, we had to lower our price from $13 to $12. So the good news is, or the output effect, is hey, we sold to an extra guy and we got $12 for that. So our output effect would be $12. The bad news, or our price effect, is hey, we not only sold to this last guy for $12, but we sold to those five guys that were already going to pay us $13. We sold to them 
at $12 instead. So we essentially lost a dollar on each of our existing customers, of which there were five. So our price effect is just going to be minus one or negative one times five for negative five dollars. We can keep doing this, get some practice. In order to sell a seventh unit, again, the good news is we got $11 from that seventh customer. So again, our output effect is $11. But the bad news is to sell that seventh unit, we again had to drop our price by a dollar for all of our existing customers. And in this situation, there had been six existing customers. So our bad news or our price effect is going to be negative six because we lost a dollar on all these six guys that we were selling to before. So our price effect would be negative six dollars. We can do this one more time. In order to sell an eighth unit, again, we had to drop our price by a dollar. So the good news is we got 10 bucks from this marginal eighth customer, right? So our output effect is $10. And now our price effect, again, that's the bad news of our trade-off, is that we lost a dollar on these seven guys that we had already been selling to. So then our price effect is just going to be negative one times seven, or negative seven dollars. And what we can see from this is that our marginal revenue is in fact the sum of these two components. That seven is equal to 12 plus negative five, five is equal to 11 plus negative six, and three is equal to 10 plus negative seven. And this really highlights why marginal revenue and price are not the same thing. Because you'll notice in this instance that the output effect is equal to price. And that's just true because we were increasing our quantity sold by one each time. So the incremental revenue we were getting from those extra customers, just that last guy, which is just this new price. But then to get total marginal revenue, we're subtracting something off from that. And we notice that our price effect is always going to be strictly negative whenever we have to lower our price in order to sell more. If we didn't have to lower our price in order to sell more, our price effect would just be zero. So then it wouldn't be surprising that marginal revenue and price were the same thing, because we just said now that in these circumstances, our output effect is equal to our price.